Hello, good evening. So sorry for the late delay. I've uh, had a few false starts this morning because the technologies changed the camera angle. It took me a few minutes to figure out uh, that it wasn't going away. So here we are. Tonight I was going to talk a little bit about plantar fasciitis and that is a foot condition. But before I launch into this uh, topic, which is requested by a patient on Friday, I have a cheesy Halloween joke for you guys. So, what do vegan zombies eat? Tick tock, tick tock. Vegan zombies eat grains. All right, you can all laugh now, right? Um, grain, uh, not brain, anyway. Uh, by the way, this is good stuff. This is just plain old public shredded wheat, not an ounce of oil in it, and very tasty. Alrighty, so my foot model is arriving here. Thank you, sir. <laughs> and uh, I was going to talk a little bit about plantar fasciitis. So this is a, thank you, a very common <laughs> foot condition. <laughs> and uh, basically, and thank you for bathing, by the way. No. <laughs> um, so basically, um, it's a pain that people often get in the heel of the foot and it can happen anywhere between the ball of the foot to the heel of the foot. There's this really big thick tendon that goes along this area and that's called the plantar fascia. So basically um, if you were to look on the inside you would see a really thick um, white band of tissue and that's connective tissue and we actually have that kind of connect tissue throughout the entire body is called the um, fascia and it excuse me it uh, it really is a remarkable connective tissue um, because there's different kinds of things that you can do to the connective <laughs> tissue uh, don't worry um, kinds of things you can do to the connective tissue um, to either help it or to um, hurt it so uh, when I have somebody come in um, saying I've got pain along the bottom of my foot first thing in the morning when I first uh, get out of bed very sharp feels like I'm uh, walking on sorry walking on uh, needles or glass uh, then I uh, immediately usually think of this plantar fasciitis because it is one of the most common things that we um, uh, have in uh, as a malady in this in this uh, location of the body. I think I'll go ahead and let you have your foot back there. Thank you for <laughs> modeling for that for us, sir. Uh, so basically, um, plantar fasciitis is something that is usually diagnosed just by virtue of the history, the story, the location of the pain. There's really not that much that is uh, in the foot down in that section. There's some muscles, there's some tendons, there's some bones. And yes, not everything is um, plantar fasciitis. Sometimes if the pain is in the back of the heel, if I can borrow your foot for a second, you can, you can keep your sock on. <laughs> Sorry, just what he thought he was done. If the pain is back here, for example, um, there's something called an Achilles tendon that comes down along here and inserts kind of deep in there. And that can also cause uh, pain in the bottom of the foot. All right, there you go. <laughs> um, and so, of course, the location of the pain uh, makes a big difference. If the pain is more in the ball of the foot, sometimes there's these little extra um, bones that can be in there called sesamoid bones that we're just kind of born with that have different um, sizes and shapes and sometimes they can get irritated and inflamed and such. So different kinds of things that physicians usually look for when they're examining the feet is the height of the arch. <laughs> um, so. <laughs> Uh, the arch is, of course, if I can get you this this way, is this section right there. Um, how high is that arch? Um, some doctors are more used to looking at feet. Obviously, if you're going to a podiatrist, they're going to be the experts in this location. Podiatrists usually um, study everything from here down and are certified to do surgeries and all sorts of stuff on there. Um, and the other good news about the this body part as uh, something that we treat in clinic is that 
usually the things that happen are pretty um, uh, pretty basic. So, for example, I mentioned those sesamoid bones. That's if you have pain in this area. Uh, Morton's neuroma. That's another one. Sometimes people feel like they're walking on a um, like a marble or something like that, and that would be pain right usually in between the um, big toe and the first toe or between the uh, second and third toe. So Morton's neuroma is actually a uh, nerve that grows into a little tumor. And then of course when you walk on it, you feel like you're walking on a marble. Uh, those things can be fixed uh, surgically by our friends, the podiatrists or foot doctors, or orthopedic surgeons can do it too, but podiatrists tend to do the most of that. Uh, sometimes people get uh, little painful plantar warts, sometimes they get, um, uh, basically they step on something and can get a little something wedged up in there, sometimes there's calluses and corns, all sorts of things can cause uh, pain and trouble in the foot. Also, uh, there can be funguses, um, and you can find those sometimes. <laughs> in between the toes. Uh, so if we're looking for the foot fungus, uh, basically it ex requires an examination um, in between the toes. And what you're looking for there is uh, basically uh, little patches of white fuzz and usually some redness. Um, sometimes people get other skin conditions too, like uh, redness and peeling and, and uh, dry cracking eczema type of feet. And uh, the dry feet can be moisturized overnight with um, some thick moisturizing lotion and a sock over it, and then it lets the um, moisturizing lotion soak right in. Thank you, foot model. <laughs> Appreciate that. <laughs> Alrighty. Um, so, back to our uh, topic of the evening, which is uh, plantar fasciitis and other kinds of things involving the feet. Um, so, when you're looking for the uh, types of things that can predispose you to getting um, a painful um, piece of tissue inflamed in there, that plantar fascia that connects the top to the bottom of the foot. Um, so you can have, uh, if there's a high arch, if there's an area just on the bottom of the foot, um, uh, hi Donna, um, on the bottom of the foot just in front of the heel bone, um, could be a sore area. Um, pain that gets worse when you flex the foot, here we go, uh, can you flex your foot? That would be um, flexion um, and extension there. So when you move your foot back and forth like that and you get pain, uh, then um, that can be a sign of that plantar fasciitis. Also, like I said, when you first step, uh, first thing in the morning and you feel like you're stepping on glass, especially um, pains in this area, although it can be anywhere from here to here. Uh, sometimes, uh, if you're having trouble moving your ankle upwards uh, that way, uh, for my lovely foot model, if you're having trouble with that motion, um, when this tendon is very tense here, it can make it hard to uh, basically move the foot in, in any direction there. Um, so sometimes we will get x-rays. Um, in my current clinic, the podiatrist won't even really see the person until we have x-rays of their feet. Uh, and so um, that's always going to be something that we're going to get is a weight-bearing x-ray. Reason being uh, the podiatrists like to see all the bones and make sure there's nothing else going on. Uh, so what can you do if you get a painful plantar fascia? Um, well, one of the first things is to rest it. So um, within 10 months of starting some very simple exercises, over 90% of people with pain along the bottom of the foot like this will get healed. Uh, the trick is you actually have to do something about it. It usually doesn't get better on its own. Um, so decreasing or stopping the activities that caused it to be painful in the first place um, can be very helpful. Uh, so, but that can sometimes be tricky because sometimes people don't realize what was it that caused it or they're in a job where they're required to do um, some of these activities such as marching and running and walking long distances and or standing at um, a cash register all day or something. So sometimes it can be easier than other times to decrease the activities that causes uh, pain on it. Um, so um, if your feet are pounding on hard surfaces, for example, that is something that can be very um, 
troubling to the bottom of the foot. Um, icing it. So ice is very, very helpful. So basically uh, getting a water bottle and filling it about halfway up with water and putting it in the uh, freezer. Now this is just any plain old um, plastic water bottle will do for this. And that ice, that water when it freezes will expand a little bit, which is why you don't want it like chock full when you put it in the freezer, otherwise you know, you break your bottle or something like that. But anyway, taking that ice cold water bottle and just rubbing it up and down the foot. Uh, so I guess I should have brought one for my demonstration. Ah, we will improvise, sorry about it. <laughs> um, so by rolling it up and down, I mean, um, <laughs> your foot on the floor and literally just rolling it up and down with some pressure so that the cold really seeps into it and also uh, so that it, uh, it allows the entire inflamed tendon to be cooled off, which is kind of the point of rolling up and down with a frozen water bottle. Of course, we're improvising a little bit there for uh, show and tell. Alrighty, so um, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory pain medication. So translating that into English means Motrin usually, or naproxen, or a leaf, or any of that category of medication, even aspirin, I suppose. Um, if you want medications that won't tear up your stomach as much, or that won't um, give problems to the kidneys over time, then you can check out some of my uh, other presentations on other things to do for pain. Short list, turmeric is very good for uh, inflammation, ginger, and uh, um, some of the other ones like uh, you can use topical um, creams and things that are designed for, uh, for foot pain, for example, or muscle pain. Uh, but anyway, for the most part, um, the Motrin and that category of medications can be very helpful for reducing inflammation um, any body part that is uh, chronically being inflamed. Uh, so if you are using one of those medications for more than a month, then come find a family practice doctor or your favorite physician in general and uh, just double check and make sure you're doing the right things. So plantar fasciitis is aggravated by tight muscles in your feet and your calves. And so when these um, things are tight, then it can cause um, inflammation and soreness here. So there's various kinds of calf stretches and things that you can do to um, basically uh, stretch out this uh, entire foot. You can stretch out the uh, calf down here, of course. Um, and so those, those are um, helpful. Occasionally, uh, the podiatrist will also inject uh, various parts of the foot with cortisone shots. I've had some patients that worked very well for over time. Uh, certain um, supportive uh, orthotics like a heel cup or uh, other things along that category of things. Uh, some of those uh, shoe inserts. Um, are you doing okay there? Here, I'll just relax the, uh, the foot model here. Thank you <laughs> again. Um, so some of those things it uh, can be very helpful for, um, if, especially if somebody has to stand for a while. I know in surgery, the surgeons oftentimes uh, have these thick uh, pads that they stand on because, again, that's something where you're upright all day working. And similarly, if you've got a job where you're standing at a register or something, uh, that can put a barrier between you and the um, concrete floors um, that are sometimes out there. Uh, physical therapy can be very helpful. Uh, there are some very good exercises. One of my favorite resources for this is the orthoinfoaaos.org. I'll put the link in the comment section below after we finish up tonight. Um, physical therapy is wonderful for the, um, for the feet. You can also take like a little golf ball and roll it around up in there. So why do things like the frozen water bottle and rolling your foot on a golf ball, uh, why are those so helpful? Well, one model of how this tendon uh, gets inflamed has to do with when the tendon is inflamed, the um, fibers, instead of gliding like uh, two pieces of paper together, the fibers end up getting kind of tangled up like a little ball of uh, spaghetti. And when you manually break up that scar tissue, gumbly, gookety, uh, spaghetti-like, tangle-like fibers, which you see under the microscope, uh, slowly over time you're ending up working out the kinks and then those fibers glide again normally. And so when the 
um, when the uh, treatment is finished, then you should be having uh, much less pain in that case. Uh, so uh, there's a couple other things that sometimes uh, people will do in podiatry. Um, there is a plantar fasciitis surgery. I've honestly seen kind of mixed reviews on that. Definitely would recommend if you're considering it, uh, please talk to your podiatrist directly and find out what's the risks, what's the benefits. Because I've seen uh, some people where they had some benefit from it and I've seen other people that a treatable condition turned into a chronic permanent pain condition because you can't really undo the surgery. So all the details of that, I would definitely recommend you talk to the people who perform that surgery, in other words, podiatrists, uh, in detail before you do that. Uh, and then most of the time people are able to recover um, uh, very well from their plantar fasciitis. Oh, there was one I didn't mention, it's uh, night splints. Um, a lot of people, uh, if I can borrow my, my foot model again, a lot of people when they sleep, they sleep with their foot pointed downwards. Um, and just because that's kind of part of the natural relaxed uh, position of the foot when people are asleep. And so what the night splint does is it takes it from pointing downwards to kind of forcing it into a position that stretches that um, fascia tendons uh, from here to here. And over time, uh, for some people, the, those night splints can be very helpful. Uh, thank you <laughs> um, uh, for helping with it as well. So in addition to the stretches and things. So uh, again, below this presentation, I'll be putting some additional links for more resources. Uh, for those that are having trouble with plantar fasciitis uh, while running, um, I'll also put a natural running center link, which has a whole bunch of different ideas. I actually met Dr. Um, I believe his name is Dr. Mark, that uh, put together this uh, natural running center website, and he is a marathon runner, family practice doc. He is really loving um, running and does a great job with uh, putting his website together. So. Um, if you go to that and put in there hey, uh, your email address, uh, they will send you a basically a little booklet about how to run without getting injuries and such. So a very interesting, good stuff on there. Anyway, well, thank you very much for joining us for our brief tour, and thank you very much for uh, our foot model for joining us tonight. And. Uh, very graciously allowing the use of his foot so he can educate everybody uh, on plantar fasciitis and a couple other things that have to do with feet too. Alrighty, have a fun and safe Halloween tomorrow. Stay safe, don't eat too much candy, and uh, I know, give out some grapes or apples or something if you want um, to help the kids be a little healthier. But anyway, take care. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.